welcome back my friend it has been a while that I haven't been cook make a cooking video for you guys I mean cooking for one person is hard because because you know my wife is vegetarian and both my son they don't eat Asian food that much you know they eat American food instead so today we're gonna make some Vietnamese egg roll I mean, there are plenty of video out there that show you how to make uh, egg roll, but this this is Tim way of making egg roll. Actually, it's my mom, my late mom way of doing it. So over the year, you know, I when it's a lot of work to make egg roll, so a lot of time I be helping my mom. So along the way, I just watch what she used, and that's how I learned. And there is no recipe; she doesn't leave any recipe. A lot of my cooking is just watching my mom and experiment myself and make it, you know, to my taste. But anyway, let me give you a short history about Vietnamese food. You know, for thousands of years, we was, uh, you know, under uh, China control. So a lot of our way of living and eating is more like Chinese food. But then like after the Chinese left and then the French took over for like over a hundred years. So we start adapting, uh, you know, some of the French food. So a lot of Vietnamese food out there is kind of a hybrid of both Chinese and French combined together. And you know, Vietnam, Vietnamese food is all about taste, look, and texture. So with this, you will, I will show you exactly what I mean. And each of them have a different way of, you know, not only it look good, but it tastes good. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the feeling in your mouth is different. So I can't describe it. But uh, anyway, we're going to go through the ingredient first. And then uh, we're going to go from there. All right. Be right back. All right. Here we are. Look at this. See how colorful the ingredient is. So, I mean, by no means that it have to be this way. You can customize the way you want it. So a lot of these you have to chop up into uh, some. Like if you can chop it, if you have a food processor, great. You can speed up the process really quick. If not, see I do all this on this. The big uh, knife and uh, you know, cutting bolt. That's all you really need. Use what you have, right? So I got uh, right here, I have two pounds of uh, uh, grounded uh, pork. The reason I choose it because it have you see all the fat there. The more fat it is, the more you see it taste right. And right here is um, I forgot the name of this thing. Yeah, it's uh, called uh, rice. What was it? Bean thread. Yeah, bean thread. You don't need a lot. You know, this bag, I've been using, if you uh, watch my previous video of how to make uh, food, uh, the egg thing, I used this before. So you, you need a little bit of this. See, I don't measure anything. I just guesstimate and, and do use one. And this one, I think you remember this from the egg thing. That one is this. So this will love go a long way. I mean... You, one of these bags, you can use, see how much, I barely use, I soak this in water. These two, you soak them in water, and they balloon up like that, that, that much. Then chop uh, onion. Um, yeah, chop uh, onion. Green leaf onion. This here is, uh, what was it called? Some kind of water crust, kind of uh, what it does. This will give you the sweet flavor and a little bit, uh, you know, smell. To, you wouldn't believe how 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 good the smell right here. This will give you look and and uh, taste also. This one will keep the uh, the ingredient inside the egg roll moist when you fry them. This is a uh, tarot, white tarot. What it does when you when you cook it up, it become uh, uh, sticky and soft. That's a lot too. 
you know. I'm not, I can I can probably use this to do something else later, like making soup. Chop uh, chop up carrot, uh, fresh carrot. Just uh, right here is one carrot, one small carrot. And I use one glove, a clove of uh, garlic. And then for the seafood, you can either uh, use these uh, crab meat that I already uh, cut it up already, or you can put in shrimp, chop up the shrimp. I mean, it's all about flavor, man. So that's it. That's all the ingredients. Oh, also, we're going to need some of this pepper, ground pepper. And some fish sauce. All right, guys, it's time to put them all together. All right, so I'm gonna put in maybe two, two spoon. You don't want too much of this because it's, it's for flavor and smell. And you don't want too much of it. And it overwhelms everything, you know? See, I like to put in some salt because uh, salt, what it does is it give you the salt in it, but not a lot of, uh, it's not gonna give you a lot of uh, smell to it, you know? See, I kind of guesstimate how much I need. I don't know. You know, you can add more. If you like more garlic smell, you add more to it. You don't want to overwhelm it. You know. I think that should be enough. Just a matter of adding everything, man. I mean, you can slowly, as you add, mix them up. You can only... Uh, I mean, it's better to add in slowly than to have to take it out. You know, you wanna, you don't want to overwhelm the meat. In in reality, if if you don't want too much meat, then you can just add more more of these ingredients into it. You know, I'm gonna add a lot of this. You know why? Because it's uh, it give a uh, fatty taste, but it's actually from the root, so it's not bad for you. It's good for you actually. I think this should be two pounds should be enough for about mm, ten big egg roll. Green, I mean onion, chopped onion. Yeah, you guys, you gonna you you won't believe how how smell how good the smell is right now with these ingredients. This one is a water crash root. What it does, it give you, it keep the meat moist. See, I, I don't want to put too much, and then I not, not enough meat in there. You know, you just have to have the right balance, of meat and, and vegetable. A little bit of this. I'm gonna spoil this. I'm gonna put a lot of crab meat in here. You can't go wrong with having a lot of crab meat, right? Doesn't that look good? Look at all the ingredients. See, when you cook these things up and you bite on it, and you don't know, uh, you know what's in it, unless you know, you know what you don't want to cook it. Man, look, I still have enough ingredients to make another batch. I might do something else. Oh, you know what I forgot?
How can you call it an egg roll without egg, right? I mean, you could beat this up and throw it in there. To me, it don't matter. It's gonna be mixed all up right now. You know why we put egg in there? To keep the meat stick together. With the egg in there, you keep the mix, uh, everything stick together when you cook. So you ever buy egg roll from uh, Panda Express? That's not an egg roll. That's, that's more like cabbage roll. So you know, they have to make profits, so they put a lot of cabbage in there. Why even go in egg roll? You know? So, if you buy yourself, and you know, it's a lot of hassle making the batch, right? So, you might as well make a big batch and divide it up, put it in a Ziploc bag, so you can make other ingredients. I'm gonna show you how to make other ingredients, other uh, dishes with this meat, with this uh, filler. Look at that. Can you imagine? Put this in the roll and then fry it up. That's why whenever I, I make egg roll and give it to people and people buy into it like, woo. So far we have like over 10 ingredients in this mix. See like, see how, how they don't kind of drop down. You don't want to put too much stuff that it won't be able to stick. See, that's pretty good right there. You don't want it too sticky, but you don't want it too loose. So when you roll into the uh, the wrap, it's gonna be hard to keep it together if it doesn't get sticky like this. I guess you if you want it more sticky, add more egg into it. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna add one more egg. I guess it's one cheap way of adding more stuff into uh, to keep more filler, you know. Look at, look at all the ingredients I still have left. See, even though I try to do very small portion, I still have a lot of ingredients. So I guess I have to make another batch of uh, of egg roll filler, you know. Like I said, I'm pretty much cooked for myself only, so I, I won't be able to eat all this in one, you know cooking session. All right, enough of that. That's all you do. Just put them in, throw them in, and mix them up. So we'll be right back for the wrapping. All right, here we are. This is uh, the fun part right here. This is where this, uh, this uh, take time. So traditionally, we use this kind of uh, shell to wrap the egg roll back in Vietnam. Here, uh, we migrate to use, uh, they call it uh, lumpia cell. I'm going to uh, attach, I'm going to put a picture into, into this picture into the video to show you what it looked like and then how, you know, how it should look like. But uh, anyway, this is how we made it back in the old day when we had no, uh, no option. But uh, so you moist, have some lukewarm water, you moist the cell a little bit. You don't want to soak it too much, too long, then it become a, uh, too soft to roll it. So you don't want to make it too big. Up to you. You know. Some people is having a hard time to make the, the roll like this. I just make it, you know, like see with this type, you you don't need the um, you don't need egg white to make it stick, you know, together. There you go. One. And when you finish making them, you don't want them to stay too cold with each other because they're going to stick. So you just kind of uh, spread them out. 
Oh, I guess here we have the um, saran wrap. Just put the saran saran wrap over it. Pretty simple task. The hard part is chopping up everything. Like I said, if you have a food processor, it will speed up everything. I'm just gonna make five. I don't think I'll be able to eat more than five today. Maybe ten. I don't know. And then I will save the rest for making other food ingredient. You know. Yeah. See that? I beat. I hammer myself on the fingernails. Oh, black and bruise. Yeah, you don't want them to stay too close to each other, then they will stick together. Don't want to look warm water and just spin them around and just enough to wet it and move it out. So I guess you kind of have to move fast. I guess I could have put more of those, uh, the black mushroom in there. You know? Like I said, just flavor for it, you know? You do it, there's no way of, certain way of doing it, just follow your own instinct. Or whatever your, you know, your heart desire, make it the way you like it. This is the basic of making uh, egg roll. By the way, this, this uh, shell, we actually use them for spring roll too, which I will make another video on another day. All right, uh, I will see you when I'm done rolling and then the frying part. All right, be right back. All right, I finished wrapping them, five of them, and I'm gonna fry them. You want to lower the fire, you don't want it to cook too fast, you know, it's pork, but you want to slowly cook it. Normally, here in America, people eat them, uh, just eat them as a snack. Whereas in Vietnam, we eat them with other stuff like uh, rice noodle, vegetable. I need to make a, a, a video for, for that kind of dish. So when, when this is fried, we cut it into like maybe four pieces from each egg roll and then eat with, uh, eat with the other dish, not just by itself. To, to us, in Vietnam, meat is very valuable. The only time you get to eat meat is on holiday, on the day that we, it's weird. We don't celebrate a uh, happy uh, birthday on, we don't celebrate birthday, but we celebrate the day that you die. So it's, I guess it's a way of getting all the children come together and remember the day that your parents died. Yes. I guess one way of portion you your, your, your your relatives, I mean your son and daughter, to come back and get together. All right, I bring you guys back when it's brown. All right, I already turned some of it over. You can tell when it's hard, then you turn it over. And it tends to stick to the, the bottom, so you want to leave it like that until it's dry, then you can start turning. Right now, they're not even brown. So what you, that's why it's important that you do it and on low fire and slowly fry them. You see, like this brown right here? If the whole thing is brown like that, then it's, it's the, the inside uh, is cooked. Yeah, you don't want to undercook pork. You're going to have some serious case of diarrhea. All right, I'll be back when, when it's ready for flipping again. All right, let's see where we at here. See, it's still not 
What? Round it. So I'll put it on a side way. Quite not ready yet. It's not quite ready. All right, guys. I just flip it over. So you want you want pretty much it's all brown like this all the way around to make sure that the meat is cooked inside. Otherwise, you're gonna have a serious case of diarrhea. All right. That's pretty much it. Just make sure everything is brown like this, and we're good. All right. All right, guys, look at this. It's all done. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Mmm, look at that. The shell is crunchy. Look colorful inside. Mm. You see how there's different stuff in there still? See how the meat look white? That means cooked. If it's not white, it's not cooked. Alright, thank you for watching. See you on the next video. Bye now.